the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to hear the message of this morning. A word from God. And the message for this special interdenominational independent service is something you should pay attention to. This message this morning will be delivered by a man who doesn't require so much introduction. But nonetheless, we have to do it. A man with an uncommon passion for the souls of Nigerians. Nigerians in particular, Africans and the people of the world as a whole. He is a teacher of teachers. He is a father of millions. He is an asset to our beloved nation, an ambassador of goodwill, a messenger of the Most High God. Your Excellency, the Vice President, Your Excellency, the Executive Governor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Please join me as we welcome Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui, General Superintendent of Deep Alai Bible Church, as he comes to deliver the message of this morning. Praise the Lord. Your Excellency, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency, Mr. Kiwomi Ambody, the Executive Governor of Lagos State. Distinguished Senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria here present, Honorable Members of the House of Representatives of the Federal Republic of Nigeria here present, Honorable Speaker of Lagos House of Assembly, Members of the Lagos State Executive Council, Members of Lagos House of Assembly, Chairman and Members of Local Government Councils, Your Excellencies, Heads of Diplomatic Missions, Distinguished Heads of Churches and Christian Associations, Distinguished Guests, Brothers and Sisters, Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome everyone to this anniversary interdenominational service this morning in Jesus' name. And I pray it will be a blessed time for everyone. And the Lord will enrich your life, bless your life, and everyone will go away with the blessings of the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless your name at this time. We thank you for our country. We thank you for our state. We thank you for everyone present here today. 
We're asking, Lord, there'll be impartation of real life, eternal life in every life here today in Jesus' name. Turn our lives around. Turn our families around. Bless our state. Bless our nation. Move everyone forward in Jesus' name. Touch every life. Transform our state. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. God bless you. You can have your seats. I'm looking at John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, I'm reading a verse of scripture here. Verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Looking at that verse, we need to go back in history and understand in every generation, God looks for a man or a woman. As we have read that verse in John chapter 1 verse 6, we could have said, and the scripture could have written, there was a man sent from God whose name was Abraham, or whose name was Joseph, or whose name was Moses, or whose name was Joshua. We could have read the verse as saying, there was a man sent from God, sent from God on purpose. To do something, to achieve something you know, in the present, in their own world. A man like David, a man like Elijah, a man like Jeremiah, a man like Daniel. In fact, as we look at the scriptures, God has a purpose, a great purpose, and a great, a glorious purpose for every individual. You're not here by accident in the world. You are not here in Nigeria or any part of the world by accident. God sent you here. And as he sent you here in this generation, he wants you to fulfill a purpose. You will fulfill that purpose. As we look at Psalm 105 verse 17, the psalm is now commenting about the life of a man. The ministry of a man, the impact of a man, his name Joseph. He said he sent a man before them, even Joseph. And you could have put your name there, and you ought to put your name there. He sent you here into the world. You will do something. In fact, even Joseph told his brothers, he said, Don't worry about what you've done, that you brought me here. Look at this, God sent me before you to preserve life. As we go through the Old Testament and the New Testament, going from Abraham to Zechariah, God has always sent a man, has always used a man to reveal his will and to fulfill his plan and purpose for his people in every generation. He never lacks a man that will stand in the gap and get something done which is according to his will. He sent Joseph and used him to preserve Israel in Egypt. He sent Moses and used him to deliver his chosen nation from bondage. And then he appointed Joshua to lead the nation into the promised land. He quit and engaged David to conquer Israel's powerful enemies, enlisted and empowered Elijah to turn the nation back to God Almighty, and he anointed and envisioned Isaiah to keep the hope of the nation of Israel alive for the coming Messiah. He appointed, he raised up Daniel to preserve divine revelation. Today, God is still searching for yielded men and yielded women. You will be a man in God's hand, a woman in God's hand. He has a mandate for every family to do something and fulfill his will in every family, in every institution, in every industry, in every field, everywhere. 
you can be the man of God's choice. And you can be the woman of God's choice anywhere you are. You can make a difference for good in this land. I will make a difference for good in this land. You can be a change agent and a better for the better and a reformer. Today, I'm looking at the message with you, becoming a man, becoming a woman, God uses beyond his generation. Look at the people I mentioned to you. They became men and women that God used in their generation. Yes, and then beyond their generation. As I look at the message, becoming a man, becoming a woman, God uses beyond his generation. Let me personalize it, beyond your generation. Three things very quickly. Number one, the significance of a man in every generation. Take any generation. Take our generation. Take the past generations and take the generations to come. The significance of a man in every generation. Number two, I'm looking at the service to all men in our generation. When God raises you up, and when God raises up anyone, he wants to make use of that person in a service to that generation. And then point number three, I'll be looking at the Savior, at our Lord Jesus Christ, who is for all men in every generation. Number one is the significance. As you think about this, I'm picking up on Joseph, the story of Joseph, the life of Joseph, the dream of Joseph, the vision of Joseph, the accomplishment of Joseph, the achievement of Joseph. He appeared before Pharaoh. Pharaoh had, had a dream. I'm sure you know the story. And this dream could nobody interpret. But God always has a man in any place and every place to bring solution to every problem. I believe in your community, in our community, in our state, in our nation, God has a man. God has a woman. And so, in the case of Pharaoh and Egypt, they said, there's a man in the land. There's a man in the land. I'm looking at you there. I said, there's a man in the land. And then, eventually, he came. He interpreted the dream. He went beyond interpretation. He went to what we call intervention. Let somebody come out with the idea to preserve the nation when we'll have real challenge. And Pharaoh listened. And Pharaoh thoughtfully said this. He said in G Genesis chapter 41, reading here from verse 38, he says, this is Pharaoh not talking about, most, talking about uh, Josh, uh, Joseph. It says, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so distant and so wise as thou art. And I had said in verse 38, and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a, such a one as this? A man, underline that, a man, underline that, fill your space, find your place. Stand in your place. Be the man and be the woman of the hour for this generation until a person like Pharaoh will be able to say, can we find a man like this in whom the spirit of the Lord is? In fact, as God spoke to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 5, look at what the Lord is saying through Jeremiah chapter 5. It's always looking for a man. You start in Genesis and you come almost to beyond the middle of the Bible and you're still searching for a man. In a generation, the Lord is looking for you. He will use you. I said he will use you. You'll be significant in the sight in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 1, it says, Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem through the streets of any city in a nation and see now 
and know and seek in the broad places thereof if ye can find tell me a man that's what he's looking for he'll find you if he can find a man if there be any that executes judgment that seeketh the truth and i will pardon it he says for the sake of that man i'll bring needed blessing to that generation as we think about this the significance of a man in every generation what kind of man will god be looking at number one a man or the savior's pardon a man or the savior's pardon all have seen and come short of the glory of god and the one that lives in sin is under a load it's a captivity it's under a body it's under pressure there's guilt there's condemnation but then jesus christ provides pardon it provides forgiveness that's why the word of god says that god the father has raised him up that is raised up the lord jesus christ to be a prince and to be a savior for to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sins number two it will be a man with strong persuasion a man that is blown by the wind the wind of criticism at the wind of circumstances can never do anything it's looking at this side it's looking at that side what do they think about me what do you think about yourself be a man of a backbone a man of stamina a man that has the grace of god in his life and be a man with strong persuasion you think about daniel in the, in the land of babylon and it says daniel purposed in his heart and nebuchadnezzar couldn't change that babylon couldn't change that it was a man whose heart was firm and it says daniel purposed in his heart that he, he would not defile himself or the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine that he drank therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he would not he might not defile himself you know the usefulness of that man in babylon because he was a man of strong persuasion in your life make up your mind get the pardon from the lord forgiveness of your sin and then be persuaded know that you are going a direction and follow that direction number three a man of sound principles if we're going to be a change agent in the state in any community in the nation in any nation you must be a person that is sound in principle there is something you follow there's a path you follow and there is what you do and you're not going to change or falter and then uh, that, that's uh, number four now a man with strategic program nothing will change except somebody rises up to make that change nothing is going to turn around by itself there is a law of motion that says any object will remain static until an outside force comes to move that object the same thing nothing will change in any community until a person has a strategic program and he knows that this is going to bless everyone you will be that man number five a man or selfless perspectives a man or selfless perspectives here is paul the apostle now and he tells us about his life and about his impact he said though i be free from all men yet have i made myself servant unto all that i might gain the more you need to understand that sacrifice is what is needed in life and if you're going to make a contribution to the growth of the state the growth of the nation and the prosperity of your community you must be a person that is selfless in service remember the lord jesus christ lives in the heart of true believers and he is the one that has paid the supreme price he gave the supreme sacrifice and because he lives in us you can go ahead and be a man with selfless perspectives number six a man with scriptural perception a man with scriptural perception 
It's not somebody who is a fanatic. It's not somebody who is, you cannot predict him because he does things just anyhow. He's thoughtful, he's faithful, he's loyal, he's deliberate, he's going in a particular direction and he knows that this will be of benefit to everyone. If you're going to be used of God and thank God you're going to be used of God. I'm talking to somebody there today. I said you'll be used of God. You'll be used of God in Jesus' name. Number seven is a man of sterling paradoxes. Paradoxes. It's like there are some opposite qualities and characteristics in our life. And there are people that tend to just this side. They don't have paradoxes in their lives. You look at the life of Jesus Christ and it was a man of sterling paradoxes. Number one, he was meek. That's not all. He was also mighty. It appears, you'll see, a person who is meek will not be mighty, but Jesus combined those two things. Number two, he was friendly and he was firm. Very friendly and firm. Number three, he was tender and yet he was tall. Number four, he was compassionate, yet courageous. Number five, he was simple, yet strong. He was resigned, yet resilient. He was approachable, yet authoritative. These are qualities in the lives of people that God will use. He will use me. I said he will use me. He will use you in Jesus' name. If he's going to use us, and thank God he's going to use us, he's going to use me, he's going to use everyone, what is a kind of service we come to render unto the Lord? As we look at the people in the old generation, that he is in the former generation, the thing that is said about them is not just paper qualification. The thing that is said about them is not just their position in society. It's the service they rendered in society. That brings me to point number two, our service to all men, in our generation our service to all men in our generation let me read about this man to you it's in acts of the apostles chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 36 acts of the apostles chapter 13 and i'm reading from verse 36 look at what it says over here it says for david after he served his own generation by the will of god stop there for a moment it says david what can we say about him? The conclusion of his life. The one sentence biography of his life. He served his own generation. Come to think about it. Everything in creation is made to serve mankind. Each person only fulfills God's will when he forgets himself. And when he serves other people. David served his own generation by the will of God. A true disciple like David will serve his brethren, will serve his neighbors, will serve his employers, will serve his communities, will serve the world how selflessly, will serve how sacrificially, will serve how positively, will serve progressively, will serve to the best of his ability. David was a man at God's own heart. He had a heart to serve God's nation transparently. Jesus is God's beloved son in whom the father is well pleased and he served and gave his life to save the world. God continues the search today. He's seeking for men saved and sanctified is seeking for men converted and committed is seeking for men selfless and steadfast who will serve and improve the lot of their fellow men in all possible areas as you think about the service we're going to render you will render service i said you will render service how can we break it down so that you know I do this, then I'm serving. I go this direction, then I'm serving. Number one, sincere servanthood for our generation. You look at your generation and you say, 
I'm going to serve and I take on the title of a servant for David served his own generation. Number two, special service with grace and godliness. Special service with grace and godliness. Don't wait until somebody tells you this is what you do. If you never do anything except what you are told to do, or if on the other hand you never do what you are told to do, your life will be limited. Your impact will be limited. It's when you come on and you're able to go the extra mile and you do what you are not commanded to do positively, practically, and you do what others are not willing to do. Daniel earned such favor and he earned such recognition in Babylon because this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was found in him and the king thought to set him over the realm you know why because he offered service with grace and godliness and no fault was found in him number three sustained support for the grassroots sustained support for the grassroots we just had the mention of the name Mordecai during a prayer both for the state and for the nation. Let me show you this about this man Mordecai. You may not be familiar with him, but he had support for the grassroots, sacrifice for the grassroots, service for the grassroots. It's in Esther chapter 10 and in verse 3. For Mordecai the Jew was next unto the king Ahasuerus and great among the Jews and accepted of the multitude of his brethren look at this look at this seeking the wealth of his people all the people protection for the people progress for the people and whatever he could do to make the life of everyone the grassroots better he did that seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his siege number four supervised strategies with ground breaking goals we're spoken about joseph and this is still about joseph the nation of egypt was to go through farming and now this man had strategic activities with ground breaking goals i pray god will give us the wisdom to be a problem solver not to be people who complain this is going on this is going on look at the nation look at the state and look at this and look at that and everybody is complaining there is not complaint complaint will not solve the problem what will you do about it god will make you a solution somebody there say god will make you a solution you'll be a solution in jesus name number five self-sacrifice without guaranteed gain self-sacrifice without guaranteed gain here is what jonathan spoke and said about david he said for he did put his, his life in his hand and he slew the philistine and the lord wrought a great salvation for all israel thou sawest it and didst rejoice he didn't have any guarantee of any gain, but all the same, he made the necessary sacrifice. It's uh, about time every Christian, true Christian, every believer, every true believer will stop staying. What will I get out of it? What will they give me out of it without any guaranteed gain? Go ahead and be of service to the people around you. Number six, strict steadfastness to the golden rule that the things you do the service you render and the sacrifice that you make all you are thinking about if i were in this situation what would i expect others to do for me or to do to me jesus said therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men would do unto you do ye even so to them and now the final thing you're ready to serve 
and you are giving yourself, committed yourself to service, we leave the result in the hand of God. Submission to God and His glory. That's what one of the soldiers in Israel, that was said to another companion soldier, he said, be of good courage. Let us behave ourselves valiantly for our people. Let us behave ourselves. Forget about yourself now. And forget about your own need now. You are called to serve. Let us, let us commit ourselves and behave ourselves valiantly for our people. For the cities and for the cities of our God. Listen to the last line. And let the Lord do that which is good in his sight. I render service. I leave the result to God. I sacrifice. I leave the result to God. I want to follow Christ. I want to be like Christ in helping my neighbor, in helping my community, and in helping the people around me. And then I leave the rest into the hands of the Lord. And then I commit myself. I'm going to follow the Savior. And that leads to point number three now. The Savior of men in every generation. Jesus is Savior. Somebody there said, Jesus is Savior. Jesus Christ, the Savior, your Savior, my Savior. And what a Savior he is. Whatever situation of life you find yourself, Jesus will come to lift you up. Whatever condition you may find yourself, Jesus is the answer. Look at this, as you look at the whole testament and you put everything together and summarize the ministry and the sacrifice and everything that Jesus Christ provides. Number one is the sacrificial lamb to all sinners. Behold the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Every guilt will take away from you. All the confusion will take away from you. And the judgment that comes upon sinners here in life and in the great beyond, in eternity, the Lord Jesus, even today, will take that from you in Jesus' name. To all sinners, he is a sacrificial lamb. To the lost, he is the seeking lamb. And to the alienated, he is the sure ladder unto God. To the sick, he is the supernatural lifesaver. If you're sick, he'll touch your body. He will deliver you. He will set you free. To the weak, he is the strengthening loaf. And to the oppressed, he is a strong liberator. To the unloved outcast, he is the sympathetic lover. Jesus, lover of your soul. He'll show that practical love to everyone, even today in Jesus' name. To the downtrodden, he is the supplicating lawyer. He'll defend you. He'll protect you. He's our advocate. To the brokenhearted, he is a supportive listener. To the dejected, he is a soul lifter. To the defenseless, he is the safeguarding lion. Nothing will hurt your life. To all men, he is the sufficient lifeline to the nation. The supreme leader to the world, the shining light, and to the whole universe, he is the sovereign Lord. What a savior! He can be your savior today. What a savior! He can be your savior forever. Savior, yes, and more than that, his savior, his deliverer, his healer, his provider. He is Lord, he is master, he is our guide, he is all you will need, all you will ever need here in this life. And what you will need all through eternity. You say, I want him to be all that for me. Very simple, repent. That means you've been depending upon other power, personality or whatever. You turn away from all those things that cannot save, ultimately. And you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ to say, Lord, I open my heart to you. I turn away from everything that cannot save, ultimately. I turn to Jesus as my only Savior. That's all. And then believe 
Say, Lord, I believe. You died for me. You're my substitute. You're my savior. And receive him. Right now he says, Behold, I stand at your door. And I'm knocking. Hear the call. Open the door and I will come in. It will be all you need now, tomorrow, forever, all through your life and beyond life on earth. He can be your savior right now. Give me a good amen, church. Yeah. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Just quietly there. Commit your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, I give myself to you. Maybe you've done that before. Do it afresh. It's not too much. Lord, I give myself to you right now. I commit my heart, my present, my future unto you. My past, take care of my past. Forgive my sins. Give me a new life. Give me peace in my heart. Be my savior. Be my deliverer. Be my healer. Be my provider. Be the Lord and the master of my life from today. Guide me throughout the rest of my life. In eternity, you'll be for me. you defend me. And I will have fellowship with you. And with God Almighty, even forever. The Lord, hear your prayers. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this privilege. We're asking, O oh Lord, as many as have turned away from the past, whatever it was, and have turned to you now, the sacrificial lamb, the one who died for us, forgive them in Jesus' name. Take over their lives. Let this be a turning point in every life, even from today, in Jesus' name. And be real as a guide into the future. Make their every life better. And use every life to make our community, make our state, and make our nation better in Jesus' name. But well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.